microphone? <laughs> I forgot my own mic, Jamal. That's the most important one. Come oh, my on. God. <laughs> How many podcasts do I do for people? Okay, let me do that over again. I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. Welcome, all you beautiful mutts, to another episode of the PhD Show. I'm your host, Fallon Dunn. And this episode is brought to you by not only my broke ass... But Top Mutt Studio, where everyone and their grandmother can make a fucking podcast. And also, if you're COVID stuck, don't worry, you can still take a fucking trip with Top Mutt Spore Bars Magic Mushroom Chocolate Bars. With 2 grams of psilocybin mushrooms and 75% dark chocolate. Yummy, yummy. In the tummy. And you can get those at FallonDunn.com. Joining me today is a very sweet fighter, Jamal. Hello. Who, you don't do drugs, you don't do shrooms. No. I guess, no, I should say not yet, but no plans to. <laughs> Listen, there's no pressure into in doing it. I'm not here to peer pressure or anything like that whatsoever. But if you ever want to. You're the person to go to? There's. See, I think I'd insult so many people that did magic mushrooms with you because I have a lot of friends that do partake. And uh, everyone's always like, if you ever do it, I have to be the first person to do it with. So there's a lot of pressure there. Oh, I see. So I, there's a long list of people that want to do ma- magic mushrooms with you. Yeah, like I feel like I'd have to invite a lot of people. It'd be some kind of like, you know, get together for the ages. Yeah, that's too much pressure. That's yeah. too much pressure. I've had people who... Who want to do mushrooms with me and you know sometimes mushrooms can be a a community event or mm-hmm. you can just do mushrooms on your own i like to do mushrooms and go for a run yeah uh one of the funniest stories i've ever heard about people doing mushrooms is one of my friends uh i remember he did mushrooms i think with another one of our friends and our friend's sister and they like went out for a walk in the middle of the night after doing shrooms and like apparently he went near this willow tree and he was just like saying how evil it was and it didn't want him there he's like that's the worst energy i've ever felt in my lifetime i don't think i've ever felt negative energy doing shrooms yeah (laughs) i don't know what kind of internal darkness you have to have (laughs) to have a dark trip on shrooms Although, although I did once do about five grams of mushrooms and then I did yoga. Yeah, that how's was, that? That was intense. Well, it was more so my body was being pulled down to the ground mm-hmm. in every position. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing's for sure, shrooms get the pussy tingling. Oh. Well. I guess good to know. <laughs> good to know. Put that on your Valentine's list. Although oh, Valentine's passed. So. Uh, for next year, I'll have to get some of your magic mushroom chocolate. It's perfect Valentine's gift. Yo, you don't have to wait till next year. Every day is a special day. I guess every day you wake up is a special day. <laughs> you don't know when you're going to die. Got to pop that poison. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been up to, man? Uh, honestly, Welcome to my new studio. Yeah, it's, as I cut you off after asking a question. <laughs> I like this one. It's uh, a lot nicer. It's not as nostalgic as your last one because. Well, okay, no, <laughs> you went to the one before the last one. Yes. Okay, uh, so in the summertime, so this is the third one, the mm-hmm. third uh, studio that I've had, and this one I think is going to be it for for a while. Cool. It feels like home. Yeah, it's very nice. You have it set up like immaculately. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming and to uh, a new place. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I guess the the one that um, the first studio that you you went to was a little sketchy. Well, it was a uh, it's like a jam space that my friend's band and my band used to practice. Oh, that's at. right. Yeah, because you were some sort of like death metal head. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was cool as fuck because it is sketchy. Like, I remember there used to be this, like, I think this lady that lived in one of the rooms and she had, like, a bunch of cats. Cats. Cat lady. (laughs) Yes. Unfortunately, she died. She passed away. Oh, no. And another man, a very old, 
guy that's shorter than me, if you can believe it, like five five foot, mm-hmm. maybe f- four nine. Um, he he kind of adopted all the cats. Okay, well at least in they... in the area. Yeah, but he lives in a shipping container. Oh, that just got burned down. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So <laughs> a lot of bad news. To so, <laughs> but yes, the cat that first. was the cat lady. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't really remember her name. I just remember seeing her feeding all the cats. Yeah, she was always there with the cats. Uh. <laughs> so your friend used to rehearse there. Yeah, my friend, uh, my friend's band. So it was this guy named Rob Esposito, uh, Victor, Dan, and uh, Tyler. They were in a band called Fear Thy Neighbor. I think some of them are another band right now. I believe it's called Creatures. So they would rehearse there, but those were like, I hung out with them more than I hung out with my own band. They were like a good time. So why didn't you just join that band? Uh, we, we, like when I quit my other band, I was going to start something with them, but then that was really it for me. I never really continued with music after that, but I would always like fucking havoc with them. We had really funny adventures like playing shows and stuff like that they were the greatest guys to hang out with (laughs) do you still play music uh no not at all what do you play (laughs) Uh, i was a vocalist in death metal bands but um i helped write some of the music because i have like some understanding of like guitar and bass but i would never play in a band i'm not that good (laughs) yeah neither am i yeah yeah so you decided to take more of uh, punching people in the face? Well, not really punching people in the face, more of rolling around with people. Uh, I do both. Uh, I did that even before I was ever in a band. Like, I think I was like 15 or 16 years old when I started training, and I'm 31 now. <laughs> oh, you old, boy. Yeah. You old. Yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> How the old knee is doing? I'm not too good, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. You're on camera. Like, was always making noises and shit. So if you ever fight me and you want to exploit it, go for the knees. Uh, it's a good place to start. <laughs> oh, but are you taking your vitamins? Uh, I guess so. I was eating. What do you mean you guess so? Well, you get vitamins through the food you eat. So if Yeah, you do you take extra vitamins? Out. What about uh, fish oil? No. Fish oil is really good for the joints. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I guess it's something your I should omegas, look into. fatty acids. Yeah, I've never been much of a person that's into health and nutrition. I just figure if you eat the right things and train hard, it'll all work out in the end. Well, sometimes the body's <laughs> lacking certain things. I find with myself, I'm not anemic at all, but if I take if I take iron, I feel so much better than when I don't take iron, mm-hmm. even though I'm not anemic. Even though if I took uh, I take blood tests to see if everything is okay and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not deficient in anything, but I still notice a difference. When I take iron, and my mom always calls me up, mm-hmm. and she's like, honey, I haven't heard from you. I haven't heard from you. <laughs> Have you been taking your vitamins? <laughs> <laughs> or she'll see me posting these running pictures, and she's like, have you been taking your vitamin B? But if you go and take these blood tests, and it says that all your levels are proper, do you think that you taking the iron anyways is maybe a psychological? No, I hate pills. I no, I no. hate it. But you hate taking them. But just just because you hate taking them doesn't mean that you don't think that taking them makes you no, better. No, no, I wish that they didn't. Yeah. No, I, I wish that they didn't do anything, <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't have to take it. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh yeah, it's like placebo effect, right? Yeah. No. Not at all. It even ha- happens that way with mushrooms, where I or it's the opposite, where I want to get really fucked, but I'm not. Couldn't you just take more mushrooms? It doesn't work that way. People no. think that it works that way with mushrooms. You really have. It's not like weed where you can add on high. Mm-hmm. Once you take the dose of mus- mushroom psilocybin. That's what's going to take you to that. And you're not going to get any higher than that moment. So it's like a cup. You can't get any more. Exactly. <laughs> you can't. You can't. So you have to think about how much how much do I want to get high? And then you take that dose. Mm-hmm. And you cannot add to it. I wouldn't. It's just you don't get higher. Your high just lasts longer. Oh, okay. So it's not like you eat some. It's like, oh, I'm not really that high. So let me take some more. I'm going to get higher. It's just your, just 
maintaining that. Okay, same interesting. Vibe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I learned something today. Yeah, you want some? Uh, some of your magic mushrooms? Not at the moment. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask again. You, know, you never know. I could have twisted your arm. It's all right. Maybe you'll convince me by the end of this. Most likely not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There have been people trying for a very long Challenge time. accepted. Shout out to Jimmy Marmer. <laughs> no, he's just my friend. He's one of my best friends. He's always tried to make me take magic mushrooms and LSD. He's always was like a uh, hallucinogenics guy. He's like, you have to try it, man. He's like, so you can find yourself. Oh, yeah, I need to find a good LSD source. You're hooking up after? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I can probably like a find pure that. LSD source. You just need a friend that's a chemist and just can make you whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one of those. No. It's a good thing I have a podcast. Maybe I could find one someone and yeah, ask I'm pretty them sure to you could just come on the podcast one. and just get me high on LSD. Ooh, that would be good. A someone to take notes. You know, they could sit in the chair and analyze us while we get fucked. <laughs> Almost like a, a scientific study. Exactly. We're just experiments for a greater cause. It's okay, I can be the note taker. You'll be the note taker in note-taker. the corner. Yeah. But you're missing some glasses. Let me see. I can see pretty well, but sure, I'll wear I'll wear glasses so I fit the role. <laughs> So what's happening with the gym world and fight world then in Toronto? It's uh, everything I don't know. is closed. Yeah, it's kind of like we're getting a little taste of nineteen eighties Russia. Some people are <laughs> open. I feel that like I I've been hearing some open, some are not open. It's all hush hush. And for those that are open that aren't supposed to be open, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in the GTA, as far as I know, everyone's supposed to be closed, whether or not they are, it's up to them, right? I think that in this country, we have freedom. So people, as long as they're consenting adults, should be free to do as they please. But um, yeah, we're supposed to be closed right now. Everyone's supposed to be closed right now. There's actually not a lot going on. Now, can you do one-on-one personal training? I don't think so, but I don't exactly know how i i don't think so from what i understand no but um the rules are changing all the time and every day we're what zone are we in are we in gray zone lockdown? i don't know are we in gray two, zone part three, two red i don't know i honestly don't <laughs> yeah so no one really knows exactly what's going on i guess there are some people that do but i think part of the purpose of this is so no one does know exactly what's going on right I guess yeah. you can get into all the conspiracy theories and yeah, all that jazz. Yeah, but I really want to get your opinion on Meghan Markle. That Meghan is Markle? what has been on my mind. What does Jamal think of Meghan Markle? Um, I don't really care that much. But one thing I will say is that I'm not a fan of the what is it the British royalty. Uh, so as, I don't know, like some of my friends know this, like my, I guess, cultural background, I'm Haitian, Russian, and Scottish. And one of the most disappointing moments in my life is when Scotland had a referendum to separate from the UK and they chose not to. I'm like, how do you not separate from these people who just completely like killed your culture, stole your language because you're Scottish Gaelic and Irish Gaelic and... So know, you're t- against the royal yeah. family. That's yeah. basically what you're saying because you're Scottish. Uh yeah, in part. <laughs> right. But ironically, the question that she was asked would have applied to you. Mm-hmm. What's the question you know she was asked? You know what I'm saying? So she was the- asked what color her kid would be. It would be white because she's pretty fair skinned. Yeah, she's pretty fucking white. It's pretty fucking way. But the thing that I don't <laughs> understand is how can a fellow mutt such as Meghan Markle being from was she from the States or Canada? Uh she's from the States. Anyways, I believe. over on this end of the world. Ever or never hear any such remark ever. Listen, 
I heard that my entire life. I yeah. got jokes about my dad's not my real dad, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, white jokes, black jokes. How could she not have thick skin? Thick enough skin to take it from the queen. Uh, I don't know. I guess oh, some the queen people didn't say it. are more sensitive than others. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. <laughs> she eats babies. Meghan Markle eats babies. And why do you say that? Because she looks like one of those manipulative women. Okay. Manipulating possibly. women, you know. And then Prince Harry, he's got his balls trapped in her mouth. Probably. But why does she eat babies? Because <laughs> she <laughs> does, Jamal. She eats babies. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> She's one of those people that eats babies, you know. It's all right. Ten years from now, we'll probably find out that you're right. And I'm always right. <clears throat> I'm always waiting for people to find that out. Yeah. <laughs> so I have so much patience. No, well, patience is a good virtue to have. It is. That's what they say anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just think it's the month's time. You're a mutt. You mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, none of this black and white, yellow, Asian business. You know, we're all mutts at heart. Well, yeah, I think it would be insane for anyone to think they're 100% anything. Is You know what I mean? Like, I think if anyone takes any kind of genetic test, they find that they're they're mixed <laughs> in some way, some percent. Now, how would you feel? How do you feel about mutt supremacy? What do you mean, mutt supremacy? Like, when I say that to you, what do you think? Uh, so, my thinking is that you're seeing mixed people as the supreme beings of the earth. Yes, and are they not? Are they know. not, Jamal? I just are you gonna hate yourself? I don't hate you're myself. You're gonna come on this show and hate yourself and say that mutts are not the supreme beings. <laughs> I don't know if the narrative that you're kind of putting me on is quite right, but I think it's up to oh, an, it's indi- all right. It's I think all right. it's up to a, the individual it's not person. Far right, but it's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's all up to the individual person, right? I think there's nah, mixed man. If that... you are mixed and you deny any one of your halves, quarters, eights, you're a fucking racist. Okay, <laughs> but I don't know. We're I don't know if we're talking about the same thing here, because I'm not talking about denial of any uh, segment that makes me me or a segment that makes anyone anyone. I'm saying when it comes to talent and you know how effective people are in their chosen fields it comes down to the individual person and how hard they're going to work mutts work really hard have you not seen mutts on the street <laughs> i think everyone no, they, they grind they grind they know all the good places to get food <laughs> they hustle all right i believe it <laughs> and they never get sick have yeah. you gotten covid no uh, i haven't gotten covid there you go all right <laughs> so I think, <laughs> okay, good study. <laughs> right on, right on. So you heard it here first. If you are a mixed person or a person mixed race, you are immune to COVID. Is uh, mixed a race? You are a person of mixed race. Like what does that mean races, then? There are multiple races that make you you. But a race, a mm-hmm. singular race. You could have mixed race. <laughs> mixed race people like your races are mixed because you're not like just white or just black yeah i don't know if if i feel right about that i feel like that offends me oh that's too bad offends me i think mixed race (laughs) it offends me as a mutt that offends me why does it offend you because a mutt is a race unto itself but not mixed races mixed race it's but just... okay so you're saying that mutts are a race of themselves but yeah. what is your cultural background or ethnic background all of it whatever the fuck i want it to be 
So you can just choose what you are depending yeah. on the day. <laughs> Listen, depending on what racial slur I want to say is what I am that day. Okay, cool. So you can be whatever you want to be. Cool. Some days I'm African. Some days I'm um, East Indian. Some days I'm North uh, um, Native American. Um, some days I'm English. Some days I want to be... All right, cool. Rachel Dolezal would really fuck with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, but she isn't she white? Yeah, but she chooses to be black. And that's oh, her. yeah, but she's not actually those things. See, oh, I just so pick and say- choose from my from, from what's okay. in me already. Okay, so see, that's I'm what I was confused. Saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but because th- that's what I was no, asking. No, I know it looks like I'm a white person that's saying they're black, but it's not that. no i was asking what your cultural background is oh i thought you meant what i identify with no i'm asking what it what is what it actually is okay my dad is zulu Mm -hmm. and my mom is mixed with indian and english okay so if you were to say that mixed race are the same thing we're different things so are we different types of mixed race or just because we're mixed race people or butts as you call them are we all the same thing that's what i'm trying to do we have to be the same well that's the point of a mutt there's no mutt that is the same there's it's less the whole point of that is not being the same black people want to be the same white people want to be the same holding on to these things it's holding us back Okay, then why even say you're anything at all? That's Just true. say you're a human being. That's my fucking point. That is the point of mutt supremacy, Jamal. But, okay, you went two steps forward and then you took a step back there. That's that's these why are the days we're any, living in. How is there any supremacy if we're all the same? Say that again. I say because I say we should all just call ourselves humans. That's yes. it, right? And then you said mutt supremacy again. So I. And I asked, why are we having supremacy if we're all supposed to be the same? No, we're not the same. That's my point. Uh, okay, so the mutts are better. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, we're on the same page. <laughs> mutts <now>. are better. <laughs> cool. So, what else have you been up to? Uh, I've Just as the first lockdown ended, me and some of my coaches, we started our own gym. It's called The Forge. It's in Mississauga. We haven't had our grand opening again, uh, our grand opening yet because keep on getting put into push lockdown. Back, push back, yeah. push back, yeah. So we've been doing that, trying to get that ready for whenever we get our freedoms back. Um, <laughs> just trying to stay in shape other than that. Oh, well, yeah? What yeah. have you been doing? Uh, jiu-jitsu when I can. <laughs> yeah. Just... Trying to stay sharp um, before, again, before this all went down, I was getting ready to do the Abu Dhabi trials. They were supposed to be in New Jersey, but they got canceled. That's the biggest Nogi grappling tournament in the world. So uh, the way it works is you have to essentially win or medal in your regions. So I guess we're North America East. So we have to win or medal in our region in order to go to the championship. And I was going to. Try my darndest to qualify. <laughs> yeah. And then COVID. And then COVID. So yeah. that's everyone's story right now. Everyone's yeah. story is and then COVID. Yeah. It's uh been a really weird and interesting time that I didn't think I'd ever live through, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. A year later. Yeah. An entirely year later. <laughs> Yeah, I've been missing my, <clears throat> I work over at my body and uh, my trainer, Emma, she, it's hard doing this virtual, because I can't see her, um, she's pretty like to the book when it comes to mm-hmm. the rules and I love, I love the, the uh, accessibility of the virtual training Mm -hmm. but i still really miss the i feel like i'm lazier i'm i'm lazier when it's when i'm not in person 
Yeah, it's uh, it's not quite the same. And I've heard a lot of people say the same thing. They just can't get as motivated when they don't have like real eyes on them. Yeah. And I feel it's the same way with with music. I, have, I get people... Um, I do other like live events for people um, and sound for them. And doing live streaming with a band is the most horrendous thing i suggest people to never do it what are the challenges you face with that it's the software that's out there is not it's not good enough yet Mm -hmm. the idea of zoom it's great but the mics only pick up the way the way it's set up, the mic picks up on the loudest signal. So mm-hmm. my mic will be muted, and your picks up on your mic when you're talking. And also, it looks horrible. It looks horrendous, and there's no feel like what you were saying to be with with a person in person. It's completely different. Like if you and I did this on Zoom, it wouldn't be the same. Mm-hmm. I'd have to wait to see if you are hearing me and whether or not I've offended you or not. <laughs> oh, you don't really ever have to worry about offending me. <laughs> yeah, you seem pretty low-key. Yeah. I, Actually, I, you seem very serious, Jamal. Are you a serious person? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. That would be for others to judge, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm asking you, do you feel serious? No, not in particular, no. It's a beautiful day. See the water? Yeah, I'm happy it's finally warming up. I hate the snow because it's cold as shit. And you know, this morning I, I went for a run and it was fucking it. freezing. I forgot my gloves. And by the time I got in, they were wrinkly, shriveled red things. <laughs> Hot dogs. Little pepperette things. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get out of running? Because I've always hated running. I think it's the like, I just hate doing it. Um, it's more of a mental thing for me because I hate doing it. Okay. I actually hate running. So every time I wake up in the morning and I go for a run, the way I have to do it is say, okay, I'm just going to put on some running pants. And then I put on running pants. And then I say, okay. And I put on my shoes. I don't actually think about going running. <laughs> so you have to deceive yourself I have until to, you're there. Just It's maybe not deceive myself, but maybe just looking at the, the very next step that I have to do. Mm-hmm. Instead of the rest of the steps. Because sometimes that can be overwhelming for me. For me, or I can talk, I can, if I think about something a lot, I can talk myself out of it. Mm -hmm. So my secret is I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. I just do the steps to get it done. Okay, so you're just not looking at the whole picture, you're just looking at the goal immediately in front of you. Yes, but I do, I do look at the whole picture from time to time. (laughs) But the only way to get discouraged? Um, Those are depressing days. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. When you look at the whole picture, but I like to run for for mind actually, and mm-hmm. but you wouldn't, you don't see the sort of the mental gain. I see the purpose in doing something that you do not want to do, or feel like you can't do. So I get, I get that. I just hate running so much. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so boring. <laughs> Well, that's why it's more of a mental thing because I, when I run, I'm usually in my mind and I'm thinking about problems that I have to solve or I'm coming up with ideas of new projects to work on or ideas of projects that I'm working on for other people. Mm -hmm. So I'm really just in my head when I'm running. So it's almost not quite a form of meditation, but... Yeah, it is. It's a form of meditation. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, especially once you reach that point where where your body's warmed up and it's just mm-hmm. you're just sailing away. Interesting. Hmm. Do you have any form of meditation? 
I don't think so. Some people say like jujitsu is meditation in motion. So do you feel that way for yourself? I guess so. Cause my mind's usually pretty blank when I'm doing it. I'm not really thinking about, uh, things consciously at least. Hmm. I would say that's a form of meditation. Mm Mm-hmm. Are you focusing on what you're doing or is your mind going to different places? No, I guess I'm focusing on what I'm doing to an extent, but I don't know. It's, my body just knows what to do at this point. I feel like for most situations, I'm just like reacting. Hmm. Now, are you usually ready to just go? Because I remember the last time... I was at an event that you were you were on. You didn't have. I think you were like called yeah. that day. Yeah, I was called like probably four hours before the event, and I should have had a match. Um, yeah, I'm always ready to go. It's funny because people, <clears throat> I forget who who was saying this. Other otherwise, I'd say it because it's a compliment to you, but. They were saying, yeah, Jamal's just that that person. He's always ready to go, and he's there, and he shows up. Yeah, I think that's an important uh, part to being successful in life is that if you are given an opportunity, you show up for it, right? Um, You can't get better at anything by not doing it. So I think especially when it comes to things like like grappling, um, why not? Even if you think you're going to lose, you might show up, and that other person has a really shitty day, and you win, right? And realistically, for me, it's not about winning. It's just about performing, right? Um, just get out there and do it. Like, uh, I try to face the hardest people possible or the hardest people available to me. Um, I always, like, even, like, if you ask Rory, I've always tried to call out people that are seen as some of the best people at jiu-jitsu in our scene. So uh, I, I just want to face the best people and if I get called five minutes before a match and they need someone, sure, why not? Who cares? The worst thing that can happen is you lose. And if your ego is so fragile that a loss breaks you, then maybe this isn't the sport for you. For true, for yeah. true. I agree 100%. When the mm-hmm. door opens or there's an opportunity is present presenting itself, why not do it? Yeah. Why the fuck not? And so many people, again, like I was saying, where if you think about it too much, you can talk yourself out of it. Mm-hmm. So just, just do. And also another thing, so that is really key for success. But I find another thing that is consistency. Mm-hmm. Cons- being consistent and reliable is such an important factor for success in anything. Yeah, yeah it's very important. Yeah, when people know they can depend on you, again, you're given more opportunity. Right? Yeah. They're not going to call a person that uh maybe they'll be there no they're gonna call the person that they know is gonna show up exactly and they're and they're gonna do it properly Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so what other things coming up where can (laughs) i mean just people see you or hear you or go to you Oh man, the only people I really see right now is like my wrestling coach, who's also one of the owners of the gym, my jujitsu coach, again, who's one of the owners of the gym, one of my main training partners, who's also one of the owners of the gym. I feel like my world's like so small right now. I miss uh, being able to teach, right? Because I teach like kids classes for jujitsu. So I, I try to check in on uh, the kids that the with well, the parents and the kids. Oh, that girl that yeah. Fought. Oh my god, she just kicked ass. Yeah, that's that's Aspen. Uh, it's funny because like at first when she started jujitsu, she hated it. <laughs> like she just hated it. She hated the idea of competition because she has like a lot of anxiety. And now it's gotten it got to the point where she like had really overcome a lot of challenges. Like she went from caring so much about, you know, oh what's gonna happen to her? yeah sure why not I'll do it. Oh and that's awesome. That's, that's what happened with that event too. Um, I think she was called like a week before the event, so she was given later notice as well. And her mom asked her, and she's like, yeah. And she went out there and she did her best, and that's all I can ask for with the kids. And I'm always proud to see them compete. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, we need more of that. Yeah. Definitely. Well, Jamal, thank you so much for coming. Again. Thank you for having me. Coming to the new place, and I hope you come back. 
All right, I will. <laughs> Well, all you beautiful mutts out there, thank you for joining us on another episode of the PhD Show. Till next time, peace. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss.